Fatal pushes on the subway tracks were just some of those charges. This spike in violence is uh, plaguing the city. Uh, people are concerned, as well as the subway system. Nearly 60% of New York voters agree that their families would be better off somewhere else, according to recent polling. President Biden delivered remarks on the shooting. Let's watch. We're grateful for all the first responders who jumped into action, including civilians, civilians who didn't hesitate to help their fellow passengers and try to shield them. My team has been in touch with Mayor Adams and New York's police commissioner, and the Department of Justice and the FBI are working closely with the NYPD on the ground. We're going to continue to stay in close contact with New York authorities and as we learn more about the situation over the coming hours and days. So we share pretty similar politics when it comes to these criminal justice issues, but I do feel from a messaging perspective, sometimes the left is reluctant to acknowledge that people do have a sincere concern about crime. It's part of how Eric Adams got elected in the first place. How would you approach someone who says, look, I don't like these, these numbers. I feel unsafe increasingly in the city I, and, and direct them toward, let's say, a progressive response instead of a kind of carceral response? Well, I want to say that the left has the same concern for crime. We just are interested in rooting out crime and actually the causes of crime rather than just continuing the same failed efforts. I would say, well, first of all, New York City, despite the fact that we have a rise in crime, we're still much safer statistically than many of these major cities. They're doing the raw data. Uh, they're, they're doing the percentages as opposed to the raw data. So yes, there's a spike, but we also have to remember New York City only recently opened up. We were in a pandemic for two years. We're one of the most expensive places, actually probably the most expensive city in in the country. We dealt with extreme closures. People are still out of work. We have uh, eviction moratoriums that were lifted. There are many, many objective reasons why there's crime rising in New York City. It's because poverty is rising in New York City. We had a pandemic. We have all kinds of serious issues. But instead of putting the money there, what you've seen happen is we've increased police presence. We've increased the budget for police. We've increased uh, the amount of police that we've hired and have them everywhere. We've cut money on education, on homeless services, and just about everything else, including health care. So that's why I would say that that instead of continuing to funnel $11 billion into NYPD, who've shown us repeatedly that they're not going to be able to stop crime, that they can't bring it down, and in fact, that they can't even give us answers to the crime that they were supposed to be able to witness when they are physically there. Instead of doing that, we need to put money into these other areas in New York City, and that will deal with these issues that New Yorkers are facing leading to crime. Yeah, Eric Adams was asked about, uh, by someone in the media, I think, well, what about putting you know metal detectors in all the stations? And he said, oh, yeah, well, we can explore that. <laughs> Wildly impractical idea idea that would just make commuting even more right. uh, time consuming. It would cost a ton, would not, right. like, let's be honest, would not do an iota of, of positive uh, effects on, on keeping crime out of the subway, but, right. would, you know, would just make everyone's lives more difficult, which is the, it is to bring, great, bring TSA style security right. to the subway. Right. Yeah, that'll, that, that'd be just wonderful. And instead of metal detectors are proposing different uh, different methods, he needs to explain why the existing methods that we pay for did not and do not work. Why don't the cameras work? We have security footage all throughout the subway stations for a reason. It's supposed to be there for exactly incidents like this. So why didn't it work? Why didn't they have that? Why didn't the police have a description? Why didn't the police even see this guy? Why weren't they able to stop him? And why did they have no footage of any kind of their own that they could rely on? Why were bystanders responsible for performing the medical care, for calling 911 and for finding the suspect? Fact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with a huge, a huge percentage of the police budget actually going to patrol hours, I would like to see, if anything, at least defunding patrols and refunding the camera operators. Something's <laughs> well, got to happen. Whoever the tech people are that are at least making the cameras work, it seems like it would be a better uh, right. source of money, even if people are reluctant to defund the police department as a whole. You made a great, really great case for doing that, though, today. And I appreciate you coming on to discuss. Thank you.